everybody, and welcome to the Hookup on Music. My name is Tony, and I will be your guide tonight through a lot of different little things, a little bit of this, a little bit of that, like all the time. Um, we're going to be digging into some cool, about six physical releases that I have here with me. We're going to start doing that a little bit more, talking in depth on these um, releases. Um, we also have a, maybe a, a surprise here, surprise there. Um, to me, they're surprises. To you, they may even be a little bit more than that. So let's 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 tune in and let's see what we're uh, what we're working with here tonight. Okay, we are we are here together on episode fifty four. Wow, car fifty four. Where are you? Great great tune from an old old TV show. But that's that's not why we're here tonight. We're here to talk about the goods, the good ease. Um, like always, we have them. We're gonna jump right into these goodies tonight. We're gonna we're gonna jump right in. Um, let's let's do this. Let's let's see what we got up here first. What are you listening to? What am I listening to? Uh, well, we are listening to quite a lot. There are always always new albums that are dropping here on the on the hookup uh, line, and we want to be a part of everything. So again. I can only stress this enough. Please, 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 if you have anything that you would ever like to share with us, we would definitely, definitely appreciate it because, well, you know, we try to do the research here and not all the time do we we, we make it, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, um, through everything. So we may miss a couple things. So please, please, please send them our way. Even old stuff you may happen to hear. Um, we're big fans of all of it here down at the hookup and at the, um, I'll just speak for the Sadistic Penguin Studios that we like music. So please, 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 please share what you have. Um, something brand new that was released, um, kind of mentioned it a little bit ago on our, our What Was to Come um, in 2024. And this is uh, Tom York's band, Smile. Okay, Um <laughs> Oh, I, I better say that correctly. The Smile. They're not just Smile. Smile was a band a long time ago that uh, well happened to be members of uh, Queen before they happened to, well, turn into Queen um, with Freddie Mercury. But this band's called The Smile. Tom York is in the band. Johnny Greenwood is in the band. Um, really, 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 really awesome. If you're not familiar who those musicians are, they are from the band Radiohead. Um Another band that we have talked about quite a lot of times here on the Hookup on Music, and I'm sure we're going to talk about them just a couple times um, more. What is cool also is they're joined by drummer Tom Skinner. Um, you know, he is a, a little bit of a jazz drummer. I don't want to say a little bit, but that's what a little bit this brings, this project brings, is a little bit more of a, of a jazz ensemble. Okay, it doesn't it doesn't have your um, quote unquote some of the more heavier elements of Radiohead. Not to say that they're you know a hard rock band, but the smile has influences a little bit more jazz, a little progressive rock, um, more looser, which is kind of cool. Um, that uh, you would always think that 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 maybe some of these members of Radiohead couldn't get loose. This is a clear indication that this band. Um, that they can get loose and their newest album wall of eyes that is what i was alluding to to bring up is that wall of eyes um was released just this past friday okay on the 26th and honestly it is a really 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 good um album okay i'm a, a huge fan of it it's eight songs 45 minutes eight songs 45 minutes so you're looking at a couple longer jams here um but I like every inch of this album pretty much. Um, I can't off the top of my head even think of anything that really I would say is, is a negative. Okay. Um, head to track number three, Read the Room. Um, really, really kind of a, a cool, 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 cool track. Um, Bending Hectic is really good too. But there's there's a lot, a lot to get to in the um, album. And take your time, please. Take your time and um, do the research and listen to it because it's, it's worth the time. Okay. Um, also, right here, um, just about a, a little less than a week ago, um, um, blah, 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 blah. Here we go here. Um, about a week ago, um, Comic 
punk guy who is a part of Sadistic Penguin Studios reached out and told me I should listen to a band called Here Comes the Mummies. Okay, right off the bat, uh, before I even listened to this band, their vibes, I immediately were like, yes, 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 yes. What is these guys about? And let's 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 dig a little bit more into what kind of I found. Um, again, they're a funk rock band. At least that's kind of what their uh, label is. Honestly, I hear a lot, a lot of different things going on. Um, but they're from Nashville, Tennessee. That really kind of, um, oh, that excites me. Because when you see them and you listen to them, I, I don't know if that's the first place I would think that they, they came from. Um, what's the word, what's the word I'm looking for here? They they use so many different kind of, um, elements, not just funk, of course, mentioned before, but back to like the smile, they use some jazz, they use soul, they ska, there's reggae. It's all around a good time. Okay. Um, they cite influences from everybody from Otis Redding to, uh, Stevie Wonder to Cool in the Gang. Um, you know, also been inspired by the garage rock band, The Mummies who uh, also would perform in bandages, okay? A band who, uh, well, was around from 88 to 92, 93, 94. They're still playing a little bit. But this is Here Comes the Mummies, a little bit different than that. But uh, again, dug into some of these albums. Really, 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 really good time. Um, Ten albums already, okay? Since 2002, they've been around. They've been, they've been, uh, they've been, What's the word I'm looking for? Putting out consistent records. Um, House Party from 2022. That's kind of where I've been kind of getting, going back and listening to. Um, I like to work backwards a lot. Um, I don't know why. Because I think if you work from the front, unless you're there from the beginning, um, it might give you a little bit of, like, like you might hear a first album and be like, oh, this is this might be too grainy for me. When if you hear the best stuff first and you work backwards, you're, for me, I want to hear it all so um that's what made me appreciate the mummies because well the mummies are worth appreciating in every single way and i was very appreciative that i was uh reached out and uh told hey check out the mummies um i'm right now in a uh, bed bath and beyond um that's a that's a that's a, the name of the album from 2011 um but the name of this band is just really some of the names of the the the, the players you know mummy cass I don't know if that's a play on Mama Cass, but Mummy Cass. We got uh, Midnight Mummy. We got Dr. Mummy Yo. We got Mother Load. We got Mummy Lingus. Just, just a lot, a lot, a lot of um, cool names. And like I said, an a, amazing horn section. So please, 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 please um, check out Here Comes the Mummies. It's going to be, well, it's going to be, well, it's going to be wrapped. That's a wrap on Here Comes the Mummies. Um, but what's not a wrap is that I've uh, been bringing it up recently. A lot of people have been talking about it. So I decided let's talk a little bit more about Mad Season. Um, really quick, great band, sadly, only was able to release the one album because of, well, Lane Staley and unfortunate his addictions, which, which um, we've talked about before on this show. But Mad Season, though, um, they got reformed in 94, and, uh, well, where they were only around two years, okay, they only were able to release the one album. But just the story of the band and the creation of this band is, is definitely something that, that always kind of sticks with me. And that's that Mike McCready, who is part of Pearl Jam, was in rehab, and he, um, you know, was interested in maybe starting a, a side thing. You know, and he met John Baker Saunders there and who was also in rehab. And they wanted to maybe get a band together of sober musicians and kind of keep each other going and keep each other. Uh, so they thought they'd reach out to Lane because, you know what, maybe this influence with sober uh, musicians around him would influence him enough to unfortunately, um, I mean, fortunately break his habit. And well, we know how the unfortunate story ended for him. And unfortunately, you know, it goes without saying, but uh, bass player John Baker Saunders, um, just really, really, really a good bass player. Um, he was also part of the band The Walkabouts. Um, he's 
just just really really awesome and unfortunately he also passed away because of addiction and it's just sad that this band was um really put together to kind of um you know what's the word i'm looking for trying to um instill some positivity and unfortunately we lost some some good musicians along the way with only unfortunately mike creedy and um drummer barrett martin who was part of screaming trees um left but check out that debut album um that's really what i would like to focus on more than unfortunately that just one two years um the album is definitely another one like the first couple musicians we talked about it's kind of hard to describe um lots of different vibes um some jazzy stuff there's blues there's heavy heavy big 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 um you know there's ah man river of deceit played that before i entered into the sphere of rock and roll tonight and uh well that was just quite the uh just quite the amazing experience as it always is and if it's been a while for you please please big dig into that album it is a good one folks really 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 good um also what was really 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 good was this last week speaking of funk on the at the show podcast i broke down a little bit of the soundtrack pretty woman and uh this chili pepper song is was included really 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 funky jam there by pearl jam and um i messed that up because that was red hot chili peppers and i said that before and then i'm looking at the screen of mike mccready and i'm kind of curious and the reason i brought up pearl jam was is that kind of like what do they think of this album Are they fans of it has eddie sat down and listened to it stone gossard um what was their vibes on it and maybe one day i will look a little bit deeper and we will share those thoughts um But that's a good thought that just came to my mind as I brought up Pearl Jam. But that being said, we are here tonight. Let's let's dig into a little bit of vinyl that I've brought along here with me tonight. Band on the run, folks. Okay. This, to me, is just a a landmark album by one um, Paul McCartney and Wings. Um, Just really, really, really put together um in, in in the oh in in the most best in the most in the most bestest way okay it's his third um third solo album okay and and to me there's just so many so many so many great tracks on here okay big fan of, of the title track band on the run but uh jet is again been played quite a lot by myself um let's go a little bit deeper mrs vanderbilt the baseline on mrs vanderbilt is, is just just oh man it it, it sticks um it it really it sticks in my head and um i I like that song quite a lot Uh, let me roll it also very very awesome awesome song more great bass paul's bass playing is really kind of uh oh what's the word i'm looking for as a a lot of people have said let's let's just cut to the chase that paul was kind of trying to do a little bit of a john right there and let me roll it um you know, and, and a lot of people ha- had pointed out that he sang the song like John did. And, well, you know, you go back and listen to it and, you know, tell us what you think. Did he sing it like John? Is Let Me Roll It kind of Paul honoring John? I don't know. You know, I'm not really sure. But what I really am sure here is the back of this album is really cool. Okay. It's really, really awesome. Um, you have a picture, of course, Paul, his wife, Linda. And the third member of the band was Denny Lane. Not a lot of people uh, talk about that, but that was the three members of Wings, the three main members of Wings. Um, The cover was, of course, really, really, really cool because it had everyone from, you know, Christopher Lee was on the cover of the album. And um, big, big fan of the cover because uh, really uh, sticks sticks with you. You know, James Coburn. Kenny Lynch. It's just loaded with with lots and lots and lots of uh, of just just cool pictures. But you got to get to my favorite track on the album. My favorite track on Band on the Run. A really 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 amazing track. And by coincidence, a lot of my favorite tracks are the last song on the album, 1985. 
wow, this song really, really cooks. Um, I like the piano. I like the way it builds. I like the lyrics. I like, I like it all. Paul McCartney stated in his own words, um, they, he didn't have a lot for this song. Um, he had, you know, um, what's the word I'm looking for? He kind of, um, uh, he, he it took a while to put just, just a little bit together the, the 1985 because you're saying to yourself how did he come up with that and not only that but he didn't write it like 1985 in 1973 i think that's pretty cool but again listen to the track because it really builds to an, an amazing an amazing 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 outro um chicago transit authority another album here that i think just really 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 is awesome it's a double album okay a double album that if you open up the inside of this double album, you got everything. A lot of members in this band here. A lot of members here. A lot of members and a lot of really awesome playing, especially by one Terry Kath album. Still looks pretty, pretty good. Not a lot of scratches. Um, debut um, album by the band which after this, they will no longer be called Chicago Transit Authority. They will then move on to just be called Chicago. And unfortunately, after 1978 and Terry Kath's passing, they won't even sound anything near like this album. But on this album, they do sound really, really good. And they got really, really awesome, awesome, awesome jams. You know, they got everything from does anybody really know what time it is and beginnings to I'm a man. Just, 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 just straight up, straight up awesome and again like the mummies an amazing horn section um even more importantly if you're a fan of the um chicago transit authority um please um let us know because there is a lot of good 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 tracks on this album um I i'm kind of always cool is that this album which is a double album okay double album three days to record in january okay by coincidence, this week, January 27th to 30th, the Chicago Transit Authority album was recorded. And let me tell you, it is one that cooks. It is one that you really definitely need to go through. And I just like the way the cover looks. Um, would have been cooler if they got to stick with that name. Um, just awesome, cool, long name. Or you might be a fan of just being called Chicago. You know, all of it being included... Um, the album is really what I would deem to be just, 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 just awesome. Um, the I'm a man cover, which is of course from the, uh, Spencer Davis group, uh, Steve Winwood was a part of, but Chicago Transit Authority, check out this album, um, find it on vinyl. If you can, if you can't listen to it wherever you can, um, please do that. Uh, Oingo Boingo. I know we're going all over the place here, folks. We went from, wings to chicago and now we're at oingo boingo and their album good for the soul wow this is just wow one of my favorites um who do you want to be i can only state enough how cool this picture is and how awesome and heavy this first song on the album is i'm just gonna keep going in and out like that because this is cool Okay, if you do have a chance, even the title track, Good For Your Soul, play it very loud. Actually, when you're done listening to this, cue up that song. It is really, really good. And again, another band that has awesome, awesome, awesome horns. A lot of horns here tonight. We got a horn section here tonight. We're going through lots and lots and lots of goodies, good, good stuff. Because you know why? I'm going to tell you why. Because I always let you know why. And we got the word, folks. And we're going to keep, keep going. I want to just say thank you again for letting me be here tonight to let you, well, you know, share with you what I'm sharing with you. Um, very, 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 very cool to be able to do that. And we're almost, uh, well, we're at the, the, the third stretch of the show. And again, please check out The Smile. Please check out Here Come the Mummies. Please check out these amazing, amazing recordings in which I am going through with you um, right now. I will um, now move on to something even cooler. 
I've decided to just walk right up to my huge shelf of CDs and just start pulling them off. We're going to just start going through some of these two. These are some great albums. You know, we're not even going to, we're going to see what I have the three in a row because these are in no alphabetical order, everybody. None whatsoever. None at all. So we've decided to pick right from the top. And right from the top happened to be Black Sabbath's Sabotage. Sabotage, sabotage. This is album number six. A lot of people happen to say it's the last Amazing Ozzy album. Okay. It's got every song on it from the lead off track, Hole in the Sky, to the ending, The Writ. Um, I think it's an awesome album. It would personally fall into my sixth favorite of their first six. But I've heard quite a lot of people say it is a really, really must. It is really, really heavy. It is really, 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 really cool. And, well, all of that being and happened to be said, um, I definitely would check into this, and I would definitely um, make sure that you uh, do the same exact thing. Because Symptom of the Universe, song's heavy. Geezer Butler, that's heavy. My story always with this album is, is if you happen to be looking at the album or familiar with the album, um, well, what the cover looks like. It did not per se to me a really big, heavy, heavy, heavy band. It was like, first of all, Bill Ward looks like he's wearing elf pants. Second, the back of the album. It's the back of them. This is cool, but the sabotage is cool. But, and again, I think it is also could be Sabbath's weakest cover, but is it still an album that we should play and play really loud if we like really awesome, awesome music? Yes, of course we shall. Of course we shall, and we will. We will always play Sabotage because, well, Sabotage is really, 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 really something that I would think that everyone out there who is into heavy music would definitely enjoy. Um, again, though, always listen to Sabbath. You know, even if it's Sabotage, if it's not Sabotage, whatever it happens to be, um, just do me a favor and uh, listen to it, you know, because that's why we're here. Um, next up is a little bit of The Chronic. Yes, what a classic album. Okay, personally, I remember seeing the cover of this at a music store when I was going to buy the Black Album by Metallica. So we're looking at like 1993, 11 years old. You know, I'm looking down and I'm seeing, you know, I mean, it might even be a little sooner than that, 92, right? It's somewhere around there because it's right when it came out and the big, huge album covers there. And then you went home and you turned on MTV and then all the hits just started piling up, okay? They just all were all right there on this album, okay? Nothing but a G thing, Let Me Ride. Um, just so many, so many, so many, so many, so many good albums. Um, the outro, The Roach is really good, Stranded on Death Row. Tit, tat, tat. I mean, we're going to be here forever talking about this album. Um, but I think, again, it shows a great, great side of one Mr. Dr. Dre. It's showing him, again, step up and be a little bit more um, mature in, you know, in the things that he was doing at this time. Um, I think it's it's just a really, 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 really good album. And I think it's also what made kind of Death Row, you know, and Dre, it's flagship artist, you know, and He's a great producer. It's a great album. Um, <clears throat> take your time. And please, 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 please sit down and listen to um, Dr. Trey's The Chronic. If it's been a while, it's a good one. Um, and last here, you will never hear this on any other music show. They're never going to go from Dr. Dre to Genesis. Turn it on again, the hits. This is... This, to me, I got this in high school, okay? This came out, let me make sure here, and, and check the, the, 1999, this came out, okay? This was supposed to be the end, no more, kaput. Well, unfortunately, they have came back last time, and I don't know if they should. I don't know. Maybe they should have. It's not really made me my place to say, but this album, it really, really cooks from the head off track, turn it on again. All the way to the end, the carpet crawlers. They get back together with Peter Gabriel, okay, and the other four original members, okay. You got Tony Banks, you've got Mike Rutherford, you've got uh, just just Phil Collins on drums. You got Steve Hackett on guitar, and they re-record it with with Peter. And they say, <clears throat> you know what? We like it. Let's send it to press. But 
this is my introduction to all the hits. Personally, I like a lot of the deep cuts now, but a lot of these songs are still really, 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 really good. Quite the time to get the hiccups, folks. Quite the time. I don't have the invisible touch. Ha, 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 ha. But that being said, a really cool album because if you notice the letters, they take a lot of their album cover letters and just make it one big Genesis. And you know what? I think that is really, really kind of um, unique. I hadn't really saw that up until this point. But, uh, you know, folks, I, I just want to say that that uh, if you're a Genesis fan or you're maybe not a Genesis fan, you, there's got to be a song out there that you really, really enjoy because, again, a really, really expansive catalog. They even have a song with some horns in it from um, Earth, Wind, and Fire joined them on, on a track. Um, uh, now, what's hilarious is that it's like... Uh, um, I keep getting you missed again. This Phil Collins song stuck in my head. Who it was celebrating a birthday, um, just I think it was yesterday. And I think to myself, "Wow, Phil, 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 Phil." No reply at all was the song that I was meaning to say with the horns in it. But please, 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 please check this out. You are not going to regret it. Um, really quick right now. Um, I don't know if you have sat down or you ever have, or you hadn't or haven't listened or, or, or anything, but, uh, please, 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 please. I remember growing up quite a lot and I remember JBTV. See so many awesome local artists on this television show. Um, the host of this show, um, it's based in Chicago, Illinois. Um, Jerry Bryant is the host. And he has been able to get on some of the most amazing artists on this show, okay? Everyone from Bad Religion to Megadeth. He's talked to Oasis. He's talked to Cake. Cake the, uh, the show is, is awesome. It has music videos, live and studio performances. And honestly, it is really, 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 really just always something that has been the basis of when I was really young. I would watch this show. And it's really, really, really cool to sometimes go out there and see other people wearing um, like JB TV, she, TV shirts and wearing other different stuff and just supporting something like this for, for so long, okay? Because it is still it is still out there, okay? And please, give it a shot, just like everything else we talk about. Because if you haven't, um, just hearing that they sit down with bad religion should be enough for you to go wow, I should really, 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 really check into this. This is awesome um, in so many, so many, so many different ways. Um, but, you know, that being said, tonight was somewhere where I really, really, really wanted to be, which was exactly talking about music and talking about these albums and CDs and everything from Paul McCartney to Oingo Boingo to Dr. Dre. You know, I loved um when my good friend here on on the Penguin Sadistic Studio, this is the Penguin Sadistic Studios. I always think of login information instead of the Sadistic Penguin Studios. Um, that being said, my good friend uh, Comic Punk um, definitely um, reaching out to me and sharing. Um, here comes the mummies. Really, really appreciate that. Check them out. Check out that Smile album. Check out Mad Season if it's been a while. If you haven't, please go back and check out that uh, at the show recording. Last night, really, really awesome. Um, it's getting drafty in here, doing really good stuff. They had a, a, an awesome draft where they had Star Wars and they were drafting different uh, characters that were uh, SNL uh, actors. Really, really awesome. I'm really positive, and that's exactly why we are here. And we're going to continue to be here and share these amazing stories with you. So as I always like to say, folks, um, we are going to always be here talking music. Next week, we got a guest. Please tune in. We're going to be talking about more awesome music. Um, if anything else comes up on the line before that, we definitely will hit it up to you. We will never, ever, ever, ever keep it where you can't skit what you need from us musically, trying to look and see what some of the, the, the new things are that are dropping. You know, we will always, always, always share that stuff with you because you know what? 
we're family here. And uh, we're family. It's not like uh, where you're at a restaurant and they tell you that we're family and then they, no, we literally want to talk about music at whatever time and at any place. So please, 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 thank you, thank you, thank you so, so much for taking the time for tuning in tonight to episode 54. It was a really big blast. And we're going to have another blast next week. And we're going to keep having blasts until these episodes say like 5,432. But until next time, everybody, my name is Tony. This is the Hookup on Music. And we will see you again really, 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 really soon. Where we will share so many, so many, so many, so many, so many awesome things. Thank you.